What you all see in this video was unimaginable only yesterday. Today, in the spring of 2023, it can be said convincingly that the authorities of our Ukraine, in alliance with representatives of the OCU and radicals, are purposefully destroying the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. How does this happen? Let's get started. On March the 10th, the authorities announced the termination of the agreement with the UOC for the lease of the Lower Lavra. On March the 29th, the Brethren were supposed to leave the monastery, but they did not. The believers organized a prayer standing in front of the entrance. People simply do not let the commission for inventory and sealing of churches. Everyone expected a forceful assault, but it did not follow. However, tragic events unfolded in the west of Ukraine. On March the 28th, the authorities organized a raid of the lost church of the UOC in Ivano-Frankivsk. A gang of young radicals broke open the side doors, sprayed tear gas inside and expelled the believers. Mayor of the city Ruslan Martsinkiv triumphantly announced that the Ivano-Frankivsk region became the first region of Ukraine without the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, which he calls the Moscow Patriarchate. <laughs> Soon the mayor said that the city had celebrated Easter for the first time without the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The authorities dealt with the Ukrainian Orthodox Church also in Lviv. On April the 5th, 50 unknown people, led by the deputy head of the Lviv Regional Council, Yuri Holod, broke into the St. George Cathedral right during the liturgy. They stopped the worship and staged a fake vote for the transition to the OCU. Then, together with the police, they expelled the believers. The temple was taken over. On the same day, the authorities terminated the lease agreement and sealed the church of the Trinity community of the UOC. The next day, the authorities did the unthinkable. They demolished the lost temple of the UOC in Lviv with an excavator. We reiterate, not some abandoned building, but a functioning church, in which hundreds of parishioners prayed. Like in ivano frankivsk Lviv mayor Andriy Sadovey frankly stated that the communities were dealt with because of their belonging to the UOC. Thanks to everyone who joined in and helped close the history of the Moscow Patriarchate in our city during these two days without provocation. На сьогодні на території міста Львова ми не маємо жодної офіційної громади, яка би здійснювала богослужіння під гідою Московського патріархату. Подобається чи не подобається? Рішення прийнято, його треба поважати. Крапка. The same story is in the Lviv region. In Borislav, the authorities sealed the church of the intercession after the community refused to transfer to the OCU. The government closed the church of the UOC in the village of Vibniv. Consequently, the authorities openly destroyed the parishes of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church precisely because these are parishes of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The example of Ivano Frankivsk and Lviv inspired the authorities of Melnitsky. But the problem is that there are many hundreds of church communities there and tens of thousands of parishioners in them. What to do? It was decided to use the provocation method proposed by the C-14 leader Yevhen Karas for the key of Pechersk Lavra. There he instructed his fighters to divide into groups of two or three where one would provoke a monk or a believer to aggression and the rest would film it on their phones. Тут задача в даному випадку виступити каталізатором ще більше загострити, що вони ведуть себе як агресори і як бидло. Таким чином, оця вся їхня агресивна поведінка, вона вся дуже сильно допоможе, щоб всі сказали, в тому числі європейці, що це якась агресивна терористична групіровка, а не монахи. This technology did not work in the Lavra because Karas instructions got into the net. But in Kmenetsky everything came off brilliantly. On April the 2nd, all the Ukrainian media exploded with indignation. The Moscow priests of Melnitsky bat a military man. 
The channel showed footage where a subdeacon with parishioners were dragging a man away, while a female was lamenting about the scene of beating the military. This entry was published by Khmelnytsky deputy Viktor Burlik, and then he called the city residents through the social networks to the UOC Cathedral. And now, already indignant at the beating of the military, the crowd burst into the territory and suddenly began to vote for the transfer of the cathedral to the OCU. The cathedral was taken over in the end. The mayor of Khmelnytsky immediately convenes a session at which he bans the UOC in the city and region. Temples are raided both in Khmelnytsky and in the region according to the well road scheme. However, let's get back to the beating of the military, Artur Ananiev. The video posted by the deputy begins from the moment when Ananiev is being dragged to the side. What happened before that was not shown on the video. Here is what the subdeacon himself says. The fact that Ananiev attacked the deacon is also confirmed by several frames posted on the web and supposed to show that the clergyman himself dropped the gospel on the floor. Here you can see that the priest's robe is torn. That is, Ananiev disrupted the liturgy, attacked the deacon and was dangerous for the parishioners, women and children. That is why he was so harshly detained. But the most interesting thing is that this footage was published by Yevhan Karas, the same one who gave instructions and provocations in the Lavra. How did he get a note from the woman in Khmelnytsky Cathedral? The answer is in this photo. Karas, Ananiev and Deputy Burlik are one team. Together they organized a provocation in Khmelnytsky, which caused indignation in society and gave rise to mass seizures in the city and region. This is how the raid of the cathedral in Shapativka took place. The excited crowd was led to the temple when the parishioners were praying inside. The side doors were broken. Believers started building barricades, but the forces were not equal. Raiders opened the central doors. The crowd burst into the temple when part of the parishioners with their priests were praying on their knees. The new masters of life rejoiced and applauded. Parishioners of the UOC, who did not want to leave on their own, were dragged out by force. The cathedral was taken over. During the seizure of other churches in Khmelnytsky and the region, the authorities blocked access for parishioners. Furthermore, instead of parishioners, the authorities gathered complete outsiders to vote for the transition to the OCU. Валентина Гесаль розповідає, мешкає в мікрорайоні на іншому кінці міста та приїхала підтримати громаду. Бажала своїм ну, прямим обов'язком сьогодні взяти участь в цьому заході. Антоніна, жителька цього мікрорайону, розповідає, мешкає поруч із храмом, але на службу Божу ходить до іншої церкви, української. Прийшли підтримати. Дуже добре. These raids are organized and led by officials. For example, during the seizure of the St. George Church in Khmelnytsky, the man who was presented as the head of a new religious community is actually the director of the Khmelnytsky's electric utility company. In the situation at hand, believers cannot hope for power. They can defend churches only on their own, as was the case in Kamyanets Podilsky. Here the officials also led the crowd to the cathedral with a clear intention to seize it, but failed. The parishioners became a wall at their shrine. Provocations against the UOC are not aimed at raids only. This is also an increase in the general degree of hatred for the church in society. And this hatred yielded its rotten fruits. Bishop Nikita of Ivano-Frankivsk was beaten in Chernivtsi. 
Раз, два, смотри. Дыкал, дыкал. Дыкал, дыкал. Дыкал, дыкал. Дыкал, дыкал. Дыкал, in the wake of overall hatred for the UOC, the local authorities are grabbing the land on which the churches are built. The scheme is simple. No land, no right to exist for the temple. During the week, the city councils of Melnitsky, Kamianets, Podilsky, Rivnas, Dolbunyv, Ternopil, Lutsk, Berizan, and many others make decisions on the seizure of land. This simultaneous character suggests that the local authorities received an order from above. So можна назвати така духовна революція, очищення. Україна славна своїми майданами. Процес переходу храмів не зупинити з Української Православної Церкви Московського Патріархату в ПЦУ. Чи можливо якусь іншу конфесію, зрештою? At the same time, a legislative ban on the UOC is in the pipeline. For what? MP Podoriev answers this question. Our goal as state agents is to promote the establishment of a single Orthodox Church in Ukraine. It already exists. It is the OCU. Moreover, Potoraev says that when this process is accomplished, the authorities will turn again to the FNA for another Thomas for the OCU, this time for Patriarchate. These are the strategic goals of the Ukrainian state and Ukrainian Orthodoxy. Let us recall the provisions of the Constitution of Ukraine. The church and religious organizations in Ukraine are separated from the state. Everyone has the right to profess any religion, freely perform religious cults and ritual rites individually or collectively, and conduct religious activities. What is happening in Ukraine around the church is a chain of crimes so flagrant that can only be compared with the crimes of the Bolsheviks. At the same time, our current authorities, like the Bolsheviks, say that Ukraine is a country of unprecedented religious freedom. The head of the state ethnopolitics, Yelensky, quite seriously stated that Ukraine is the space of the greatest religious freedom in Europe. Is it really so? The demolition of churches, mass seizures of churches with the participation of the authorities, the deliberate destruction of one confession in entire regions, the incitement of hatred against a particular denomination are these signs of religious freedom. Someday, all the actions of our authorities against the church will be given an assessment, as it was done with the actions of the Soviet regime. Those state agents involved in the raids of local churches or elimination of the church at the legislative level will be responsible for this, while the war will serve only as an aggravating circumstance.